Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Kenton Senior High School, where tonight the homestanding Wildcats welcome in the upper side of Valley Rams. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Nate Garlock and our entire WSN crew. Alex and Nate, this is a early season matchup, but this is a big rivalry. These two schools flat out don't like each other. <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot of uh, miles separate these two schools, these two communities. They're all very familiar with each other, and it may be, you know, game two or three, game four here in the early going of this season, but you're gonna see this like it's gonna be like a tournament style atmosphere. Absolutely. The upper side of Valley Rams, the visitors tonight, they come in with a 2-0 record. They are coached by Dre White. Offensively, Nate, they average 59 a game, and defensively they give up 32 a game. They are led in scoring by 6'2 junior Alex Sanders at 24.5 a game. Yeah, last year USV, they you know they had a bunch of different options and they were a little bit more diverse this year. They have some new faces because of graduation, but some of these familiar guys are stepping into that offensive role, which is what they need them to do. Last year they finished at 20 and four, and they lost 66-51 to Spencerville in the section finals. The Kenton Wildcats, the home team coached by Ryan Miller. This is game three. They lost their first game to Colonel Crawford, 53-42. They came back last night, Nate, got a big win on the road against Coldwater, 40-35. Offensively, they averaged 41 a game, and they give up 44 a game. Yeah, it'll be interesting tonight. Uh, I'm real interested to see this Kenton defense. When you look at quarter-by-quarter quarter score, I, I know what the finals right, were, right. but the quarter-by-quarters were kind of interesting. Third-quarter defense by this Kenton Wildcat team, the la their first two games, seven points on game one, only three points last night to Coldwater, and then in the fourth quarter, those where they've kind of struggled, almost like maybe that conditioning, right? We talk about right, right. getting into basketball, you know, you're trying to come off a of football season, early season, legs aren't quite underneath you quite yet, and it seems like their first two games, Kenton has had that problem. They've been going, but that fourth quarter comes. They run out of uh, run out a little bit of wind. The legs are a little bit tired, and you know they almost gave up a big lead last night to Coldwater and held on for a five-point victory. So it'll be interesting tonight, especially on a back-to-back, -back, uh, the second night of that back-to-back. -back, you know, to see what kind of how that defense looks tonight. And I talked to Coach Ryan Miller before the game, uh, and he talked about those kids last night. They they were down two at halftime, and they came back and they won the game. And he felt like, and he had his best or his leading scorer fouled out of the game, and he brought a couple of sophomores in. They hit huge free throws, and he said to me, he said, Danny, I felt like we grew up last night. Now, it's early, but he felt that. That's a really good feeling. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, especially early going, and you can have those kind of those... Uh, Road wins are huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You kind of, you have those gut checks as a yeah, team, and right. you, when you get them early season, it only helps you going forward as you're, you know, this Kenton team, you know, they're still kind of coming into their own, a little bit of rebuilding as well, um, you know, so those types of victories can, can really stand up big, and then, you know, you come right in tonight, back to back and you got a rivalry game. And there's right off the bat a three ball by number four, Ethan Yoder. And Ethan Yoder is the number one scorer right now for Kenton. He comes in, <coughs> excuse me, uh, averaging about 16 a game. So he is a good shooter. Had a nice game last night against Coldwater. Had 21 and four. Here comes the Rams on offense. They push the ball to Sanders, and that's what I like to do, get down to the block, and that is what they do really well. Alex Sanders, a 6'2 junior, knocks in the deuce. That makes it 3-2 on the home savings alone scoreboard. Nothing fancy there, just trying to find a soft spot in the zone, and Sanders was able to do that. Good find on the inside, and he's able to finish. They'll try to push the ball, and the ball comes back out. Three ball on the way, off the back iron. Rebound by Blaine Castle. Blaine Castle, the post player for the Rams, comes in 6'4", senior. This is Drew Stevens with the ball. He'll go to the rack, take it up. A lot of contact, nothing called. Here come the Wildcats. This is Yoder on the left side. He'll bring it down, and he'll slow the pace down. First two offensive possessions by Kenton. We've seen uh, take pretty quick three-point tries, and Coach White coming into tonight. You know, as you see, a third straight three-point. Yeah, there's uh, no secret that, what they're going to do, right? And Coach White said this is a sneaky good three-point shooting team, and they knew they were going to have to defend the line you know, pretty good, as you see the first turnover of the night. And there's Drew Stevens with the ball. They'll bring it over to Maddox Underwood. Maddox Underwood, the sophomore, and there's a three ball on the way, and it's off the back iron. Rebound comes down to number three, Gavin Payne. Maddox Underwood started for this team as a freshman last year. He's a sophomore, so he's got a lot of game experience under him as a sophomore. Nice job by Gavin Payne. Let's take a look at the starting lineups tonight. Alex Sanders, the junior 6'2 wing. Jason Helton is a 5'10 senior. Drew Stevens is a 6'2 senior. Maddox Underwood is a 5'11 sophomore. And Blaine Castle is a 6'4 senior for the Rams. For the Wildcats, number one, Tyson Lawrence is a 5'5 senior. Number three, Gavin Payne, 6'3 junior. Number four, Ethan Yoder, the leading scorer for the team, 6'3 junior. Colby Quay is a 5'10 senior. And Seth Manns is a 5'9 senior. So there's Yoder again with a turnaround. 
Rebound comes down. This is number 15 for the Wildcats, Parker Rary. Both these teams here in the early going fast pace, trying to get up and down, want to go quick. And seen Kenton being able to come up with a couple of good offensive rebounds to give themselves second opportunities. I think it's going to play a big part as we move forward, you know, being able to control that paint in the early going. Kenton's had that yeah. advantage. And you and I talked off air about these first few games, and, and you had such a good point when you said the game is so fast for these kids, that, especially new kids and underclassmen who haven't got a lot of game time experience. And, and when does that team slow down, Nate? You know, game, I know you can't pinpoint a game, but you see the difference from now until the end of the season. And, you know, you, there's no way to mimic game speed in practice. You can yeah. try and everything, but nothing, you know, when you start adding adrenaline and all these other things, nothing compares to being out here and playing and hearing the early going. You just don't know what you're going to get, especially when you talk about a team like USV that's not going to go to their bench a whole lot. Right, they're, they're not. not. Depth is going to be an issue this year. Um, you know, Kenton as well, they're not going to go extremely deep in their bench. So two teams that are going to rely on their starting five to come up big is another turnover, this one for the Wildcats. They get the ball down quick. There's a layup, and it's in it's number 10. Colby Quay, the 5'10 senior. Makes it 7-2 on the Home Savings and Loan scoreboard. Home Savings and Loan of Kenton is committed to serving your community since 1888 and offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. There's another turnover, so the aggressiveness from the guards for the Wildcats is causing the Rams some problems as Drew Stevens got caught on the corner out there and another steal. Well, and Ethan Yoder, you know, we talked about his scoring ability, but he is long. That wingspan is, on, yes, on is. Yoder yeah. is, is impressive, and, you know, that really helps. He's quick, he's fast, he's got that wingspan, so he can get into passing lanes really quick and cause problems. We just saw it right there. You know, as soon as he comes with that pressure, he's able to get a hand on it, and the Wildcats here trying to take advantage of some early turnovers. And it's interesting, Nate, you, you look at uh, Ryan Miller, head coach for Kenton, and there's another pass inside, and no, another foul called. That will go, let's see who that was against. That'll go against Blaine Castle for the Rams. I believe that's his first. I talked to Ryan Miller, the Kenton coach, before the game, and he said, settle down, remain composed were the two biggest things for him because he said he understands the rivalry. He's played in this rivalry. He knows the emotions, and he just wants his kids to play composed, and so far, so good for the Wildcats. Yeah, they're doing a nice job. You know, USV, you know, we mentioned they lost quite a bit in, in graduation. They, they did. They had some sure. guys who were some mainstays. Um, who were used to had had a lot of varsity minutes under their belt, and now you got some guys. And Connor Coach Sanders White, was really good, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And you know, and you know, Coach White knows that, and he said he's got young guys that are going to have to step up. They are, they're not going to have a choice if they're going to be successful this year. Those guys are going to have to come into their own pretty quickly. Um, and you know, when you see things like what Kenton's bringing them, you're seeing this pressure here tonight, especially for the defense. That's one of the first tests you have to be able to handle. Yep, you've got to be able to handle pressure. You've got to be able to control the ball and, and keep it safe. A little one two two half court trap there, and that was more of a just to slow the Ram offense down there. Is Maddox Underwood from out top three ball on the way? It goes in. Maddox Underwood, the sophomore sharpshooter, knocks down the three and it makes it seven to five on the home savings alone scoreboard. Yeah, Maddox Underwood that time did a nice job setting his feet and got the home court or home court bounce on the <laughs> yeah, visiting court. That's right. Here's Kenton again, they'll go back inside, and that's a number two foul on Blaine Castle, and that's gonna be an issue. You said it earlier, the depth of Upper Side of Valley, and checking into the game now is 6'4 sophomore Mason Thompson. He'll come off the bench. So that's already the third team foul for the Rams, two on Castle, one on Drew Stevens earlier in the game. I mean, uh, It'll be interesting, you know, you're not going to be able to play as aggressive. You know, defense is going to have to play off a little bit. you got to be a little bit smarter about what you do. And as notice I, uh, off the chart, I, I gave Mason Thompson about two or three inches on his uh, height there. So, <laughs> the game listed at 6-1. Comes off the front of the rim. That'll be rebounded by Stevens. So he'll bring it down. You notice on the Rams roster, they, they've got several guys that can bring the ball down. They'll have Maddox Underwood bring it down. They'll have Drew Stevens bring it down. Helton will bring it down. Everybody on that roster within, you know, the first six players or so can handle the ball. This is Underwood, passes into Helton. Helton looks out, he'll take the jumper up, and he's going to be fouled. I talked to, to uh, Dre White before the game, and he talked about winning the interior, getting in the paint. He believes his kids are stronger and more physical. And the other thing, too, is he talked about defending the three line. We've already brought that up. Kenton's going to knock down a lot of threes or attempt a lot of threes. And uh, he also said we got to play defense an entire game. 
Checking for the Wildcats, number 11, Seth Mayer. Jason Helton, the senior at the line. That's his first point of the night. That'll make it 7-6 to six on the home savings alone scoreboard. Our premier sponsor tonight is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose Family Center is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Helton able to tie this game up at 7. Don't go two for two from the line. So, you know, look from like the early going that Kenton was going to have some advantages on offense. It got started quickly. Saw a three ball go in, some offensive rebounds, but USV stay in the course. Yeah, they've done what, a nice job know, of settling down. That, yeah. Weather and that kind of that little bit of a run and that pressure. We're still tied here with under three to go in the first quarter. This is Ethan Yoder. He's guarded by Drew Stevens, which is a really good matchup. The ball's going to go into the backcourt. And then I'll go back to the upper side of the alley. That time Yoder just got a little bit deep and you know kind of wasn't quite sure what to do with the basketball. Knew he couldn't get a shot off and a little bit of miscommunication. I think he thought the his teammate was going to come out a little bit wider. So now it's Kenton with the turnovers and USV see if they can't come up with something. And here you see the Wildcats are going to double team Stevens on the wing out there. This is Maddox Underwood. He'll hold the ball up top over to Helton. It's a screen from Thompson. Back to Stevens. Loses the ball in the corner. You know, I know you've seen USV a lot more than I have, Danny. But, you know, last year especially, Maddox Underwood really impressed me. Comes in as a freshman, started, played a ton, you know, had to learn on the fly, had a couple of rough games, and, you know, had some things that he had to work through through the season. But as a freshman, to step into that spot, it, you know, they had, you know, a lot of things going on last year, um, a lot sure. of first, and, you know, he came in. I thought he did a great job, and I think he's going to be a stalwart of this team, especially here early going as USV's trying to get things going. I think they're going to have to lean on Underwood and his experience. He's, he's a really, really good athlete. He, has, he's also, he also excels in football. He was the quarterback on the football team, and uh, last year he ran track and field, and he was an outstanding long jumper. So he's got all the makings of a really good athlete. Uh, he just needs to put it all together, and uh, maturity and, and, and playing experience will really help him along. But, yeah, you're right. He will be the star for this program the next couple years. This is Stevens on the right side. They're trying to break that Kenton zone here. 142 to go, all tied up at seven on the home savings and loan scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock from Kenton High School. They had some success early getting into that soft spot. I'm a little, um, kind of a little surprised that the guys on the wings haven't tried to slide behind on that baseline. That's where we saw, I believe it was Helton in the early going, be able to get kind of in there and had an opening. But right now, just settling for passing it around. Yeah, that top defender knows when Drew Stevens comes across the middle. They're going to face guard him if he catches the ball in the paint. This is Alex Sanders. Takes the shot up, and that's a nice, strong, aggressive move for Alex Sanders. That's four on the night for Sanders, and that gives the Rams the 9-7 lead on the home savings loan scoreboard. Extremely patient offensive possession that time as USV just was in no hurry. They were fine with passing it around the perimeter until they got what they wanted, and Alex went right at that defense. And there's Yoder again with another three. Sanders comes down with the rebound, and he's going to be fouled by number 10, Colby Quay, and that will be Quay's first, team second. So as we talked earlier, a really nice crowd for a Saturday night here in Kenton as the gym is uh, three-fourths the way filled. And like I said, this is a big rivalry game. Uh, they've been playing this a long time. Yeah, these are one of those games where everybody kind of marks. You know, you're gonna, <laughs> you're, right. you're, yeah. your communities are going to come out. You don't have to travel too far. Weather's not too terrible yet nope. either. You know, unfortunately, not a football game to watch tonight. <laughs> uh. You had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> you had to go there. Here come the Wildcats on the break. They'll bring it down the right side. It'll be stolen again. This is Mason Thompson, and a nice job by Thompson of getting into the paint and getting the ball, and he's going to be fouled. You saw Piper did a nice job of getting down into the paint and got to this defender off the ground, but instead of trying to attack and maybe pick up that and one, thought about the extra pass, led to the turnover. So it's just like some experience early yes. season type yeah. stuff. And right there you saw Mason Thompson make the steal, and Mason is the first one off the bench for the Rams, and that's the kind of stuff you look for from him. Bring the energy, get a steal here and there, get a loose ball. That's exactly what he can do for you. He's a very valuable part of this team. This is Underwood up top. We're at 15. They'll hold for the last shot. 9-7 on the home savings alone scoreboard. Uh, oh, they're going to get uh, Yoder on the foul. Ethan Yoder picks up the foul as he connects with Drew Stevens out there, and that'll be his first. Ethan Yoder, his first. 
See it. And Yoder was trying to get a little aggressive right there, trying to um, try to come up with a steal here at the end of the quarter. Just got a little bit too much of the hand. This is, this is Stevens as the clock goes down. Stevens takes the jumper. And no. So after one quarter from Kenton Senior High School, the Upperside of Valley Rams will take a 9 to 7 lead. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton Senior High School. Danny over at Nate Garlock as the visiting Rams hold a 9-7 lead. And Nate, really, really patient offensive work by the Rams on those last two sequences. And they go to lot, or they go into the first quarter with a 9-7 lead. Yeah, I was, a, I was a little shocked to see uh, USV, uh, or excuse me, Kenton, to get away from the pressure that they had in the early going. We saw when Kenton, when they were able to pressure USV and they got some turnovers, they, you know, we saw them kind of in that three-quarter press, but that wasn't really pressure. It was just kind of to slow them down right. a little bit, you know, make them think about some things. But they came with traps. They, they were doing a lot of things to give themselves extra possessions. They got away from that, got settled into their zone, and they let USV kind of settle into that offense, move things around a little bit. You could see Coach White calling things off from the bench, and no pressure was coming. So I'll be interested to see here in the second quarter if they make that adjustment defensively and put a little bit more pressure on that USV offense. So a nice job right there by number 23, Stephen Piper, as he goes to the rack. And I'm not sure what they called there. I thought it, it was a call. I thought it was a call on the upper side of Alley. Yeah, it was actually a travel call when okay. he jump stopped. He slid those feet a little bit, so they got him on a turnover. As you see, Kenton still in that three quarter press. This is Alex Sanders with the ball. And a little Stevens. This is Maddox Underwood. Fires up a three from the right corner, and he's got it. Maddox Underwood knocks down the three, and he gives the Rams the 12 7 lead. Underwood's got five on the night. So it's been quite a run here for the Rams in this first half as we've seen them over this last maybe five minutes, six minutes of play. Nice answer, though, by Kenton. Steven Pipe knocks down the three and makes it 12-10. You're exactly right. A great answer by the Wildcats as they match the Rams in back-to-back -back threes. This is Stevens. You kick it out to Helton. Helton will bring it around to the top. This is Maddox Underwood over to Sanders. Thought about shooting. It's going to drive the middle. Back out to Underwood. Underwood for three from the left side. Off the iron. Matt, or Mason Thompson tries to come in and get the ball, and it goes off of the Rams. It'll go back to Ken. And now they're going to call a foul on Thompson. And didn't see a lot of contact there. I saw Mason Thompson go up for the rebound, but didn't see a lot of contact. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a pretty clean grab as he didn't get into the body of Yoder that time, but it must have been some contact on the hands. It was right in front of the official. Upper side of Alley was 20-4 last year, Nate. They lost 66-51 to Spencerville in the sectional finals, but a, a tremendous year for the Rams. Yeah, and that was one of those years, too, you could see, like, building up, you know, yes. a lot of programs are like, all right, this is going to be the year. This is, you know, and that was what that led into. You know, Coach White brought a big change in, into that USD program, and they, they saw a lot of success last year because of it. And a little bit more of a rebuild this year coming for USV. But, you know, we talked about some of the experience that they had, and they're just going to need some younger guys to step up into those roles. But, you know, they could still have some success this year if those guys step up. Sanders takes the shot. It goes off the back iron. It goes out of bounds, but it'll go back to Kenton. And you look at Kenton, and they last year were 4-17, and 17, lost in the sectionals to Salina, 36-34. I talked to Coach Miller before the game, as I said before, and he, he really likes the team. He said the kids are working really hard. And their problem right now, and you can see, they don't have a lot of size. Yeah, you know, and you see good move by Yoder there to get onto the inside. Um, you know, they're, they're in a rebuild. Um, and they're starting to see some of that success coming out of that rebuild as, you know, obviously uh, already have a victory on the young season. Nice rebound. Good hesitation that time by Piper. Piper with a stick back. Makes it 12-12 on the home savings alone scoreboard. Steven Piper's got Piper's doing a nice job. Sophomores come in off the bench and, and giving them a big boost. So we apologize for a little bit of technical difficulty here. If we, if we, if you can't hear us, maybe that's a good thing for some people. But uh, it keeps going out on us. So we'll, this is Thompson inside as he knocks down the deuce. Mason Thompson, the six-one sophomore, gives the Rams the 14-12 lead. So both offenses now settling into a rhythm, kind of a feeling out process there in the first quarter. But 
Now here in the second quarter, both offenses firing. As that three-pointer was just off. Firing at will. That was number 12 for the Wildcats. Excuse me, number three, I'm sorry. That was Gavin Payne. There's another triple for the Rams. Max Underwood with his third three-pointer of the half, nine on the night. Coming makes, up big for these Rams. Makes it 17-12 on the home savings alone scoreboard. A little jumper off the left iron. Here comes Underwood. He feels it right now. Goes back into Sanders in the middle of the floor. Sanders kicks it back out. Drew Stevens from three, the top of the key, and it's off the iron. Rebound comes down to the Wildcats. Here comes Yoder on the right side. He looks to push it. He'll bring it out top. This is Gavin Payne with a little spin. Goes up and a lot of contact. And they're going to get Drew Stevens on the foul. That'll send Payne to the line for two. Nice job by Payne. Just kind of went into attack mode that time. And went right after Drew Stevens. Able to pick up that foul. That opportunity now from the free throw line for two. Checking in the game for upper side of the alley is number one, Wyatt Helton. Coming in for Kenton. Number 13. And that is Dawson Miller. And number 10, Colby Quay checks back in. So we've got a timeout on the floor with 4.04 to go until half. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school basketball. WOSN. We're back here at Kenton Senior High School where the upside of Valley Rams lead the Kenton Wildcats 17 to 12. And look, <laughs> Kenton's going to have to deal with Maddox Underwood because right now he's on fire. Yeah, he's finding that stroke. He's, it's not even just that he's been able to get in rhythm the basketball from the uh, behind the arc. You know, he's been able to just spot up shoot. He's you know been able to get things going. So behind the arc, they're going to find something to do. And even on the defensive side, yes. you know, we've seen him be able to get down. He's crashing, getting boards for this team. So Underwood, you know, we were just you know almost right on cue. We were just talking about what he could do for this team. And and uh, he's stepping up here in this third quarter, or second quarter, excuse me. Number 13, Dawson Miller checks in for the Wildcats. And Ryan Miller spoke glowingly of this young man from his performance last night at Coldwater. Came in in the second half, and they said he played an absolutely fantastic defensive game. Really proud of the way he stepped up for his Wildcat team. Here comes the Rams. They try to break that pressure a little bit. This is Sanders. He's double teamed in the corner. The ball's stolen away. And a foul clear out top. And Coach Miller is looking at the official and saying, hey, the guy down by the play didn't make the call. <laughs> make it 3.48 on the clock. Rams lead 17-13. Danny Hobart, Nate Garlock from Kenton High School. You know, if this was like the game after Christmas, we'd get to see everybody's new Christmas sweaters, but uh, don't get to see much of that now. <laughs> This is Helton from the left side. He airballs it. And Sanders rebounds, picks it back up. This is Kenton down the right side. And they knock in the deuce. Colby Quay lays it in. And he makes it 17-15 on the home savings alone scoreboard. And I'll tell you what, that was uh, a great play, great finish by Colby Quay. But that was all started by the run out by Steven Piper. We mentioned him in that first quarter and part here in the second quarter coming off the bench. Be able to track up to that. As, uh, Underwood again as he knocks in the little jumper. He's got 11 on the night, makes it 19-15. He's got 11 and 19, Nate. He's really fired up. There's a little drive by number 10 for the Wildcats, Colby Quay, as he knocks in the deuce, running down the middle of the lane. Just a little floater, knocks it in, makes it 19-17. Colby Quay coming alive here. A couple of big baskets in the second quarter, seeing the pressure from Kenton, trying to pick back up. This is Thompson in the corner, gets it back out to Helton. They'll swing it back around to Underwood. Underwood for three from the left side. Off the iron. Rebound comes down to the Wildcats. Steven Piper. Piper has really played some good minutes here in the first half. Here's a three from the top of the key. Goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down to Sanders. Rams will bring it down. Coach White says, slow it down, fellas. Slow it down. And this is when I'd like to see the Kenton pressure. When they, they kind of stop, you see them all kind of look right. back to the bench as Coach White is getting what the play in or what he wants them to do, communicating with them. You see all the USV heads kind of turn. That's when the, that Kenton Bring defense up, needs yeah. to kind of you know pressure them a little bit, try to see if they can't force a mistake. This is Alex Sanders spins around, tries to go in the middle, back out to Underwood. Underwood drives, a little jumper from the base, or excuse me, from the key. Comes down to Sanders. They're going to get Sanders going over the back. 
Yeah, Sanders that time he went up with the first try looked pretty clean, but after he kind of got off his fingertips, he got over the back a little bit into the into the Kenton defender. So ball's gonna go back to the Wildcats. Remember when we used to jump that high? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was just trying to hope, hope you made me feel better. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> Here comes Ken, 155 to go. They're down 19-17, a near steal, but a nice job of corralling the ball. This is Piper again up top, and he's going to be fouled by number one, Wyatt Helton. And Coach White, er, he is not happy with that play that far away from the basket, and Wyatt Helton is charged with the foul. Colby Quay will go to the line. Excuse me, Stephen Piper will go to the line. And the big thing is that is now team foul number seven, under only a minute 47 left to go here in the half, but... You know, now you're in the one-on-one -on -one opportunity, so you shoot free throws if you're Kenton. Anytime you can get right. fouled, you might get a little more aggressive, try to get into that defense, that's try to exactly, see if you can't force that, them. That's a great point. That's exactly what I was going to say, Nate. I would take that ball to the rim every time and see what happens. This is Helton again. Looks for Underwood on the other side. He'll go to Sanders in the middle of the floor. He's double teamed out top. Underwood will spring it back up, and he'll settle down the Ram offense. Rams lead 19-17 on the home savings loan scoreboard. This is Thompson out top. He's swinging around to Helton. Wildcats are going to stay in that big zone, keeping the Rams out of the middle of the floor. Thompson looked. He'll go back up top. This is Sanders from the top of the key. He air balls that one, and that's going to go back to the Wildcats. Not the shot I don't think Coach White wanted. They were really patient on offense. Not the shot I thought he wanted to settle for. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to tell what they were looking for there that time. As we've seen that a couple times, they've, getting, they've got into that set. They've moved it around the perimeter. Not sure if that was drawn up for Sanders or not. He had a pretty good look at it, just didn't get his legs underneath him. And a real nice drive by Tyson Lawrence, the 5'5 senior. As he goes down the left side, does a little stutter step and knocks in the jumper. Makes it 19-19 on the home savings alone scoreboard. Kenton's going to stay with that pressure. This is Sanders out top. And they've really been hurt by Blaine Castle being on the bench the entire first half with those two fouls. Yeah, you saw Castle early in that first quarter. He was playing some pretty tough, aggressive defense, kind of that enforcer down low. Had to take a seat. Coach White didn't want to um, risk him picking up that third foul. And so here we are with a tie game. 15 seconds left to go in the half. 19-19. We're at 10 seconds. Maddox Underwood's up top. Swings it over to Helton. Back, almost a steal. Helton will go back to the right, left side, back to Helton. Sanders picks it up, middle of the key, takes the shot up, knocks it in. Alex Sanders, cool under pressure. We'll go to halftime. The Rams lead the Kenton Wildcats 21-19. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back for second half action from Kenton High School. Danny Hobart, Nate Garla. And we've got a good one. 21-19, the Rams lead after one half. And Nate, we take a look at both these squads. And obviously it is, a, it is an early season game because the pace is a little bit uh, helter-skelter, I want to say. Uh, both squads, you know, feeling each other out. USV did a nice job of slowing the pace down a little bit. Kenton stayed in that zone. They've went to the 1-2-2 half-court trap. Uh, but Maddox Underwood's a problem right now for the Wildcats. Yeah, he is. When he's been able to find some space, he's been able to square up. He's got three three-pointers in the first half already. He's leading USV in scoring. He's got 11 overall. Um, and we've seen a little bit of everything. You know, we, you talked about the pace that they play at. You know, it's kind of seen, we've seen up-tempo. We've seen USV want to slow it down. We've seen turnovers on both sides. Both teams have had scoring binges. You know, it's, and, you know, that leads us to where we are right now at 21-19. But I, I really think that here in the second half, the biggest thing to watch are going to be the fouls. We mentioned early yes, on, yeah. USV not very deep. You know, we saw them have to go to the bench early with Blaine Castle having a seat quickly. But they don't, other than that, there really weren't any substitutions. They yeah. tend to only go, you know, they, five, they six seven, deep yeah. and maybe seven. seven. And that's only if their hand is forced. Yeah. Um, you know, they had 17 fouls there in that first half. They got several guys with two fouls already. So we'll see how aggressive they can be on defense, especially here um, in this second half, knowing that they got a couple of guys who, who have to be careful and don't want to be picking up, especially that third one early. Here's Stevens from the left side. He knocks down the triple. A great sign for Drew Stevens as he gets a hot start, and he gives the Rams the 24-19, knocking down the triple from the left side. 
Our premier sponsor tonight is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose Family Center is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Nice scoop and score by Yoder there. You know, we talked about Ethan Yoder. I felt like we talked about him a lot we in did. that first half, but the, the score box wouldn't tell you that. When you're looking, when you're looking back at, at the box score, he had a three-pointer early in the first quarter, and it was pretty quiet. He did Most of what he was doing was defensively after that, just his fifth point of the night, but here doing a nice job attacking the basket. And You saw Helton. We just talked about the fouls, and, you know, right out the gate here, less than 30 seconds played in the third quarter, and USV picks up a foul. And it is imperative that Yoder gets on track as he is a 15-16 point score so far this year. And on the other side of the floor, you've got Blaine Castle with 2,000, no points, and they've got to get some production out of that young man. Yeah, absolutely. He looked a little frustrated there in the first half, and here they go immediately right into him. But you can see why they like having him down there. He is aggressive. He plays strong. He is a big kid. He does has nice footwork down there, even when he comes against the double team. And he went right at that Kent defense. And you saw when he got the ball, Nate, he held it up high, and he held it strong. And two players try to take it from him, and he still gets away from him. So you're exactly right. Nice, strong player. This is Stevens as he's double teamed up front, looking for an outlet. They'll try to split the double team. The ball stolen. Here come the Wildcats down the left side. Shot and score. Number 10, Colby Quay, 5'10 senior. And that's going to help Kenton along the way with that defensive effort. Colby Quay with his eighth point of the night. And we saw that trap. And I felt like that was when, excuse me, that was when Kenton looked their best defensively. When they came out, they put the pressure as there is Underwood <laughs> right on cue. Maddox Underwood with his fourth, the correct fourth three of the night. He's got 13 to lead the Rams, and he is still as hot as he was in the first half. And it makes it 26-24 on the home saving loan scoreboard. See, Underwood didn't need a lot of space that time either. Here's a dribble drive on the left side, and a nice dribble drive by number three, Gavin Payne, as the 6'3 junior takes it up with some authority. We're knotted at 26 here. Danny Hook, Nate Garlock from Kenton High School. We've got Hardin County rivalry at its finest, and we are knotted up at 26 apiece here in the third quarter. They'll go to Sanders in the middle of the floor. Little jumpers, he misses. Blaine Castle goes up, and he is fouled. And boy, you, you called it correct. He is a space eater in the middle there on that block. And he's drawn all kinds of attention. Well, and even before that call, what set up Sanders to be wide open is you had Castle down there, and they they were marking him up, had their back to the rest of the offense, and Sanders was able to slip right in there in the middle of the paint and had a wide open look at it. Here's Sanders on the dribble drive as he goes to the middle of the floor, kicks it back out to Underwood. Underwood from the left side, and it goes in and out. Blaine Castle tries to get the rebound, and they're going to get Castle. And that is huge, Nate, because that is his third foul with 5.45 to go in the third quarter. You know, and that's one of the things, all the good stuff that we talked about with Blaine Castle and all the things that he brings to the floor, at times those can be negatives. When you can get too aggressive, you, when you are the biggest guy on the floor, when you are the strongest guy on the floor, sometimes things that may not register if you're playing against, you know, kind of the equal look a little bit worse. Um, and that's, I think that was the case right there as Castle was just going over for a rebound, but because he's so big and strong, was moving guys around and picked up a foul. And you saw Gavin Blaine, or excuse me, you saw number three, Gavin Payne, who took the ball inside, and he is fouled by Sanders. And they're going to count the basket. Uh, not real sure what they're saying there. <laughs> I I didn't even see the ball go in the rim or in the hoop. Did you? I did. I did not. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not confused. real sure. But they called an offensive foul, and it was a turnover. So yeah, but I'm not no, real sure what happened. But no well, score well, uh, went up on the scoreboard either. No. But I'm not sure the. Well, the, the official motion for the ball to go in the the basket, but we've got nothing on the scoreboard. Still not at 26. So. I'm confused as they are. <laughs> I, I am as well, and it looks like they gave Gavin Payne a foul, though, so that was his second on the night. There's Sanders. Nice job of Sanders catching the ball on the low post. Takes it off the glass, and he gives the Rams the 28-26 lead. This is Yoder guarded by Stevens. Yoder goes around his back off the left side. He'll kick it back out. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Colby Quay knocks down the three, and he gives the Wildcats their first lead in the second half at 29-28. Colby Quay is having himself a night. 
He's the leading scorer for this Ken Wildcats. Did a nice job catching that one in rhythm, getting his feet set, and got a great look at it. And this this little bit of press that Kenton is putting on, and they've stayed with it this entire game, and it's really causing USV fits because they're not able to get into their half-court sets like they'd like to. Yeah, and, I, you know, I, I know I'm sure I'm sounding like a broken record at this no. point, but the, the, the pressure that Kenton was able to bring through the whole game, that's what I felt like they got away from in the second quarter, even part of that first quarter. That's what it let USV kind of have their run. They got back into the game, and it was back and forth. Whenever they get back and they don't bring as much pressure, USV is able to get in their sets, and we're seeing some good shots. But when they bring that trap, they bring that extra help, you know, USV just hasn't been able to handle it. Here's Maddox Underwood as he gets the rebound. As he takes it all the way down the floor, and he's going to be fouled. And they're going to get number one. This is Tyson Lawrence on the foul. Checking in the game for upper side of the alleys, number 22, Mason Thompson. And he gave the Rams really valuable minutes in the first half when Blaine Castle was in foul trouble. Uh, he did. He did a nice job for him, And, you know, Underwood there, you know, there wasn't too much more Tyson Lawrence could do. It looked like he was playing pretty good defense. Hands up, trying to stay motionless. That was all. That foul was all Underwood that time. Underwood moving around, getting into the body, making it look a little bit worse than what it was as Lawrence was trying to just to go straight up. But um, good basketball IQ there by Underwood and was able to get into the body and get himself to the free throw line. Underwood misses the first one. And what a luxury it is to have when you have a guard like Maddox Underwood who can rebound on the defensive end and bring the ball the length of the floor, get fouled, and go to the line. He knocks down one of two, and he makes it 29-29 on the home savings alone scoreboard. 4.15 to go here in the third quarter. This is Lawrence with the ball. He'll swing it over to Colby Quay. This is Lawrence go to the middle. Back out to Gavin Payne. They'll go back to Yoder from the left side. Yoder takes the three way back. To, goes off the iron. Rebound comes down to the Wildcats, and they're going to get Mason Thompson on the foul. Yeah, that one, that time, just not a great... Uh, not, not a great move that time by Mason Thompson. It, you could see that one coming. That, you know, you know what he was on. He's like, if I can get him off balance, maybe he goes out of bounds, but a little bit too much with the forearm. Official was right there along the baseline. And now Thompson has two fouls, as does Blaine Castle with three fouls. So their post-interior players are getting into foul trouble. Nice move. Number 11, Seth Mann sneaks back around the screen, and he gets the ball on the post, and he knocks it down to make it 31-29. Wildcats on the home savings loan scoreboard. First points of the night for Seth Mann. Did a nice job working through that defense. Got himself a look at the basket. There's another turnover by the Rams. Here comes Yoder and the Wildcats, and they'll turn it back over as Alex Sanders gets it back out to Underwood. So a little, little bit of uh, turnover problems for both teams here in the second half. This is Helton with the ball. He'll go back to Thompson. Thompson dribbles to the middle, goes back to Underwood. Underwood looks to go to the middle, back to Sanders. He'll go to the middle of the floor, and he'll turn the ball over again. Gavin Payne with the ball on the right side, kicks it out to Yoder. Yoder goes up, defended by Stevens, and he blocks his shot. A nice job by Drew Stevens as he outlets it to Underwood. Underwood's going to go up, and he'll knock it in. So nice transition offense by the Rams as they get a steal and an easy bucket by Maddox Underwood. That was a good run out by Underwood that time. Good hesitation and body control. As the defender came flying by, he was able to get that one in to tie the game up. This is Gavin Payne, and he knocks it in. And they're going to get Sanders with the foul. Gavin Payne takes it up strong. He's got seven on the night. Gavin Payne just going right at uh, going right at that, yeah, that, uh, at Alex the Sanders. He's doing a good job, was trying to be strong, didn't want to give up his position. But Payne that time had a full head of steam, made sure he didn't lower his shoulder. Was able to finish and got the end one. Gavin Payne knocks down the foul shot. He's got eight on the night, makes it 34-31. Kenton as they stay in that little bit of a press. Drew St Stevens will bring the ball down against it. Gets it over to Thompson. Thompson almost loses it. He's double teaming the corner, and he's going to get fouled. And they've got Gavin Payne on the foul. Thompson tried to go a little bit of baseline. Gavin Payne didn't get his feet out there, and they'll get him with the foul. And... I got some pretty unofficial marks in here, so we'll wait. But that is, yep, that's going to be Gavin Payne's third foul. And Gavin Payne does a nice job working in the middle. He's going to have to take a seat. As you see, number 15, Parker Rary, come back into the game for the Wildcats. But Gavin Payne, last time down, did a nice job underneath, picked up the in one. But this time on the defensive side of things, got a little too aggressive. As you saw Kenton go back to that trap into the corner. And Drew Stevens loses the handle in the middle of the floor. And nice re uh, pick up by Helton as he tries a little half hook, and it goes nowhere, and they'll bring it back out top. This is Maddox Underwood. Underwood's going to reset the offense. They'll bring it back up top. 
34-31, Kenton leads with 2.10 to go here in the third quarter. This is Underwood in the middle of the floor. He goes off the left side, takes it up, and he gets fouled. Foul's gonna be on number 15, and that is Parker Rary for the Wildcats. That is his third foul. Underwood goes to the line. He's got 16 on the night. And that one will go off the back iron. Still at 16. Second trip to the free throw line for Maddox Underwood. First time was earlier in this quarter. Went one for two. And try to replicate that as he's missed the first one, but looking to sink the second throw. In. And then there's the second one up, and he knocks that one in. That'll give him 17 on the night. It's 34-32. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. With 2.05 to go, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton High School. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock for this Hardin County rivalry. The Wildcats lead with 2.05 to go in the third quarter as they lead the Rams 34-32. And both teams, Nate, are getting dangerously close to foul trouble for a lot of guys on that bench. Yeah, you know, we talked about um, having some foul problems just in that first half, but we didn't see either team go into the bonus till under two minutes left to go in the first half. Well, here we are under two minutes left to go just in the third quarter, and Kenton is one foul away from bonus. Here's the Wildcat. Upper side of the alley is in a man-to-man -man defense. This is Lawrence, a little jumper from the right side as it goes off the rim, but they pick it back up, swing it back out. Jumper up, and that's off the glass, and Sanders will get the rebound for the Rams. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. He's guarded by Lawrence. They'll swing it back to Underwood as he'll reset the offense. And you can see the adjustments that the Rams have made. They don't like that three-quarter press that Kent no, brings don't. them. So there's the They're moment push it, someone yep. gets the rebound, you can tell Coach White said, push it up, get up into that court. We'll pull it back and set the offense up that way. Drew Stevens from the left side. He connects on the triple. And that is a big plus for the upper side of Valley Rams as he's got six on the night. And the Rams take a 35-34 lead. So Drew Stevens came out here in the third quarter. Made a three-pointer to get the scoring started, and here we are with a minute 10 left to go here in the third quarter. He hits another big one to put his team up. And Drew Stevens, the 6'2 senior, is, uh, is averaging 15 a game uh, in this young season, the three games they've played. So he's at six right now, so they really need his offensive production. There's Lawrence from the three-point line, and he knocks it in. Tyson Lawrence, the 5'5 five, five senior, knocks in the triple, and every time Upper makes a run, Kenton responds. See, quickly, Kenton gets into that three-quarter press. USV this time able to bring it up without much trouble. Here's Maddox Underwood from the left side, and he knocks another one down. That's number five on the night for Maddox Underwood. He keeps firing away, and he gives the Rams the 38-37 lead. He's got 20 on the night. Maddox Underwood doing everything that this USV team needs him to do. And they're going to get a foul out top, and that foul will go against number four, Jason Helton. The 5'10 senior. You saw that one from way up here as he ducks down, he goes up, and Helton just holds his arms up. But when he goes into him, they're going to call that every time. That is his second, it's USV's fifth. So this fourth quarter could get interesting. We had a really close game at one point. Free throws could come down to it as both these teams, you'd imagine, pretty early into the fourth quarter, are both going to be in the bonus. This is Ethan Yoder at the line. He misses the first one. He's got six on the night. And as I said earlier, he's averaging about 15 a game. So they really need him to get on track. As I said, Drew Stevens needs to get on track for the young Rams. A little surprised to see Blaine Castle come in here with 32 with, seconds yeah, left to go in the that. quarter. You'd like to think, you know, you thought he'd want to stay and uh, bring him out to start of the fourth. Didn't want to risk picking up that fourth foul before the end of the third quarter. But Yoder picks up another free throw that makes it 38 all. They'll go back inside to Sanders. An easy bucket for Sanders as he was defended by Parker Rary, but he goes around him and he knocks in the deuce to make it 40-38. And yeah, Blaine Castle is going to have to be real careful because if they come in the middle there and he has to defend with those three fouls. Because that would have been the first thing I'd have done if I'd been the Wildcats. I'd have been taking it right at Blaine Castle, but Lawrence does a nice job just working around and no one came to step him up, so he was able to get an easy layup. This is Stevens with the ball. He goes up the left side and he takes it in. Drew Stevens with the dribble drive, and he gives the Rams the 42-40 lead. After three quarters from Kenton Senior High School, the Upper Side of Valley Rams lead the Kenton Wildcats 42-40. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
Our premier sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose Family Center is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428. Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. Nate, you take a look at Upper Side of the Valley, and we, we've talked about Maddox Underwood a lot tonight. He's got 20. You look on the Kenton side, and they've distributed the ball a lot tonight, and Tyson Lawrence has seven. Gavin Payne has eight. Ethan Yoder has seven. Steven Piper has five. A lot of guys getting in the offensive flow. Yeah, and it, uh, it's just kind of with whoever has the hot hand. You know, we saw Colby Quay um, make a couple of quick back-to-back -back baskets there in the third quarter. Tyson Lawrence towards the end, a couple of back-to-back -back baskets, and it's just whoever's feeling it. The offense is able to run through them, so that's a nice luxury to have. Um, compared to some schools that have to rely on one or two guys to score. Yoder tried to go to the left side. There's Tyson Lawrence. He tries the three ball. Rebound by Blaine Castle as he boxed out. Lawrence out clear at the top of the key. <laughs> he's a little hesitant as he's got those three fouls, but he did a nice job. And there's not a bigger size disparity on the floor than between Blaine Castle and Tyson Lawrence. Yeah, Tyson Lawrence didn't want to do too much <laughs> to get after that one. <laughs> yeah, he just go ahead and let Blaine have that one and, and get reset on defense. And they'll go back to Drew Stevens in the middle. And they'll get a foul on number three, Gavin Payne, and that is his fourth. And that is not what Ryan Miller, the coach for the Kenton Wildcats, was hoping to see from Gavin Payne. No, not only does that give Gavin Payne four, that also puts them in the bonus. So uh, they should be making a trip to the free throw line here for the one and one. Stevens will go to the line. Parker Rary will check in for Gavin Payne as soon as they shoot this shot. Alex Sanders will check in for the Rams. And Alex Sanders is going to come in. They're going to give Drew Stevens a breather here with 7.24 to go in the contest. The Rams lead 42-40. Yeah, Parker Rare has got a little bit more playing time than he's used to getting as yeah. he's had to come in and spell Gavin Payne uh, quite a bit tonight. First one's on the way for Stevens, and he knocks it down. Well, we mentioned in that third quarter, you know, free throws may come and play a big part of this game down the stretch. Three-point game now. Drew Stevens starting the fourth quarter on the free throw line, essentially. So we'll see. You know, it might just come down to who can shoot better from the charity strike. Stevens lets the second go, and it goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down to Steven. He takes a little jumper, and it goes off the back iron. Blaine Castle tries to get in, and who are they going to get that on? They're going to get that one on Mason Thompson. Mason Thompson, that's his third, and now Castle has three. Thompson has three. The Rams lead 43-40. He had to think uh, Blaine Castle's heart stopped a little bit on that one as he went up for that rebound, and that's when the whistle blew. But either way, now multiple Rams in foul trouble. We'll see if that changes the way that they play. See Yoder out top, guarded by Sanders. The ball goes back to upper side of the alley. So. A lot of banging in the middle there, but no foul called. And the Rams will take control of the ball with 7.07 to go. It's a little bit of frustration that time coming out of Rary uh, towards the end of that play. But even though it comes back, what it does do is it allows Kenton to get down here, get set up on defense. And when they've been able to get into their set defensive, or their defensive sets, excuse me, um, you know, they've been able to give USV some problems, and right now they got to slow down the scoring. This is Helton as he's taking a shot. First one this half he's taken. He gets his own rebound. Rebound comes down. Mason Thompson attempts to get it. It's going to go out of bounds, and they're going to say it went off of Kenton Wildcat. Are you surprised, Nate, that they've got Stevens on the bench with 6.42 to go in the game? Yeah, a, a little bit, you know, but it also might be one of those things where he's not going to be down very long. Sure, they want sure. him to get a little bit of a break here because they know once he's back on the floor, he's not leaving. This is Sanders with the dribble drive. He goes up, a lot of contact, and a fantastic move by Alex Sanders. The 6'2 junior knocks it in. He's got 12 on the night, and he gives the Rams the 45-40 lead. Largest lead that either team has had in quite some time. And a nice job by Seth Mans to slip through that screen. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take another timeout with 6.21 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Home Savings and Loan of Kenton. Home Savings and Loan of Kenton is committed to serving our community since 1888 and offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, our scoreboard sponsor. So 6.21 to go. The Rams lead 45-42.
and a nice job by Seth Manns to split that screen there and get it through there and make it a nice bucket. Yeah, Seth Manns, only four points on the night, but both of his baskets have been pretty timely. You know, points when Kent needed it to kind of put an end to USV's run as USV had stretched that lead out to five, but Mann's able to make that back into a three-point game. And here's your guy, Drew Stevens, back in the game, and you were correct. He got about a 30-second break, but just enough to give him a little breather. And they'll isolate Sanders on one side. This is Helton with the ball. He goes back into Sanders. Sanders is going to get fouled, and they're going to get Seth Manns on the foul. So a nice job of uh, a little bit of uh, delay in the action there, and they brought the screen across, and they isolated Sanders on the right side, and then they switched him to the other side. See Sanders going back to the free throw line, and 18 fouls now. It's Not a kind bounce there for Upper Side of Valley as that goes off the back iron. This is Yoder with the ball. He's guarded by Drew Sanders. They'll go back to Tyson Lawrence out top as he's guarded by Helton. Rams lead 45-42. This is Seth Manns. He's got the ball up top. Goes to the right side. Tries to get the ball back to Yoder. They'll go back to Lawrence. Little jumper from the right side. Goes off the rim and then they'll go back to upper side of alley. It was a nice job finding Lawrence in rhythm that time. He was able to get the ball. Got some pretty good height on it. Just off on the shot. And I watched Tyson Lawrence play this game, Nate, and he's so effective going to the rim. Uh, I, I would really, really like to see him get to the rim more. He's, he's really quick, and uh, look, he's a small kid, but boy, he's got a heart of a lion. He gets right to the rim. Now here's Underwood back in the game. Got to think that he's going to try to pick up right where he left off with his <laughs> you think score. So? <laughs> 532 to go. Rams lead 45 42. Danny Hilbert, Nate Garlock from Kenton High School. Mason Thompson will swing it across to Maddox Underwood. He goes to the foul line, goes to the right side, takes it up, and he knocks it in. Gavin Payne tried to stop him on the dribble drive, but Maddox Underwood just too strong, and he gets another bucket. He's got 22 on the night, and Coach Ryan Miller's going to take a timeout. They're down 47-42 with 514 to go here on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton Senior High School, where the upside of Valley Rams lead. 47-42 with 5.14 to go. Nate, you saw Maddox Underwood with a dribble drive, goes up the right side. As soon as he does that, Coach Ryan Miller calls a timeout. What do you think he's telling his kids right now? Do you guys know that Maddox Underwood plays for <laughs> USB? Very good. Very uh, good. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, They've tried multiple things. Their pressure defense is working. Maddox Underwood tonight has just been on fire. It's, it's I mean, his game. He, You're right. He, 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 he's been finding space. Even then, it wasn't. The defense wasn't bad. Maddox just lowered his shoulder and got himself to the rim and had a good finish. So I'm sure they're talking about ways that they can try to guard him, make sure they're bringing some help. If nothing else, you know, if he's going to continue to make shots, it's not going to be done easily. Sure. Tyson Lawrence just a little bit too hard there. Aggressive play there, but he misses the shot. It'll come back to the Rams. Maddox Underwood brings the ball down. Drew Stevens guards. Guarded by Yoder. They'll go back to Underwood. Look for Sanders down on the low post. And they've got a five-point lead. They'll be content with running their offensive sets. We know that USV can play at that slow pace. They have no problem draining the clock. They have no problem. This doesn't take them out of rhythm. It, you know, sometimes you see teams that they want to slow things down. They want to try to eat some clock, but it actually does more harm than good because it gets them out of their style of play, kind of gets them out of the rhythm. This is exactly what USV wants to do anyway. So this feeds right into their hand. And there's Underwood from the left side. As he misses the ball, but a nice rebound by Mason Thompson. The hustle play of the game right there as Thompson comes up with a loose ball, and they'll reset the offense with 4.08 to go. And Dre White's going to take a timeout. With 4.06 to go, the Rams lead 47-42. to You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton High School. With 4.06 to go, the Rams lead 47-42. This is Helton with the ball. They'll go back to Drew Stevens. Now Kenton's back in their man-to-man -man defense. Down five. USV running a version of a little bit of a wheel offense here. They're getting screens up top. This is Alex Sanders. They'll bring it back out top, and they'll be content to run more clock. 
Yeah, I'm sure Coach White was talking to them about where the basketball is going on the floor as Stevens pulls up for a nice two. And that was created, Nate, by Mason Thompson on the left side of the key, sets the screen and allows Drew Stevens to get the ball and knock down the little jumper. This is Yoder, a little up and under. He's going to be fat. No, they're going to say he walked. Yoder catches the ball in the middle and he walks with it. Yeah, Yoder did a nice job with his footwork, but then as he came back around, what he needed to do is just go up and under and, and put that in. Instead, took that extra step. And that's going to lead to another timeout by Kent. <laughs> another timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton Senior High School. We're the upper side of Valley Rams lead the Kenton Wildcats 49 to 42. As they're talking over their business here in the huddle, they'll come back on the floor with 3.20 to go. And everybody's using their timeouts for Nate. It's a little bit of a chess match between Dre White and Ryan Miller right yeah, now. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is, <laughs> you know, both these coaches are not wanting to keep any of them in their pockets and pretty much after every possession wanting to talk to their team so they can figure out what they want to do and you can see Kenton immediately full court press trying to get into it and we're going to have another <laughs> time out. <laughs> Nate let's talk a little bit let's keep it right here and let's talk a little bit about the Lima land area and the basketball we're going to be seeing this year talk about some of your top teams that you think are going to have outstanding years this year. Well you know it's always hard to pick especially <laughs> sure. early in I this year. I put you on the spot. <laughs> well it's just because we are so fortunate oh in this gosh. area with the basketball that we get to see and there's always teams that seem that you know you, you think coming in and they go off to a slow start and like all right maybe they weren't what they thought we were then sure. we hit tournament time and you see those upsets you know the max always going to have great teams you're going to have marion locals they're you're, pretty good yeah you're going to have these teams you know but mary local you know congratulations to them they just won state, another state yes, title today absolutely. but that also means that they are way behind when it comes to basketball and that's kind of what happens every year with them yes. they've just gotten used to it at this point but you see them get off to a slow start but they'll be right there um you know, I always look forward to seeing Lima Senior, Coach Simpson, and what he has done with that program year in and year out. No matter who they lose, you know, big loss with Khalil Luster and a bunch of other guys as they've gone on to play uh, at the college level. You know, but he, at this point, is kind of with his program. It's just kind of a reload, not a rebuild. Um, to see what they're able to do there last year in the track, seeing what they, they can That's do there. That's a great there. point. Um, you know, then you look through it at the NWC, you always have good teams. You Spencerville's always, really good. This I, year, I had yeah. a chance to see Spencerville. They are going to be able to score with everybody. I think for them it's going to come down to probably some of the, the their defense and who they can hold. They had a big win against Elida, but then you talk about Elida, another program, Coach Taylor trying to bring that up, got off to a hot start, won their first two games of the season after only winning three all of last year. And there is the upper side of Valley breaks the pressure there, and Alex Sanders goes down the left side. And that is going to be foul number four, I believe, on Gavin. No, is that five on Gavin Payne? Gavin yes, Payne has just checked back yes. into the game as they, you know, at this point, Parker Rary just getting quick breaks as he's had to go out. And um, Gavin Payne's going to be done for the night. It'll be Rary the rest of the way. You're right, because Gavin Payne has just fouled out. And Alex Sanders will go to the line with 3.15 to go and he attempts to give Upper Side of Alley their biggest lead of the night. What that also does is give 19 fouls um, for Kenton. So from here on out, any time yeah. that Kenton fouls, regardless of where it is or what happens, USV is going to be going to the free throw line to shoot two. So Alex Sanders will go to the line to shoot, th shoot two. Excuse me. First one's on the way. It goes off the back iron. So, so far, one for four from the line here in the fourth quarter from USV. We've mentioned it multiple times. You know, if this get, they, if uh, Kenton can close this gap a little bit and this gets a little bit tighter, those missed free throws really could loom large. Keeping the door open, aren't they? Mason Thompson tries to corral it, but it goes off of his hands. Here comes Yoder down the right side. This is Manns with the ball up top, 3.08 to go. Tyson Lawrence on the right side, kicks it back out. Three ball on the way from the left side, off the iron. Rebound comes down to Rary. No, it's a scr scramble for the ball, and that's going to be a held ball. And they'll separate the boys a little bit. I told you it's a county rivalry. <laughs> county rivalry, that's fourth right. quarter, that's tight right. game, lots of fouls. <laughs> It's the perfect recipe for a little, a little, <laughs> a little bit. scrum, yeah. yeah. Nobody got hurt. Everybody's good. They're all friends. <laughs> Kenton's going to stay in that 1-2-2. Two, two. They're trying to slow down that upper Santa Valley offense. But right now, it's all about – you notice, Nate, they're a lot more aggressive right now with this trap. And they almost get his near steal there. Here comes Underwood. He'll kick it down to Sanders. 
and he'll bring it back out to Stevens. You know, and, um, and Kenton here, it's, you know, you're kind of, um, you just got to wager how much you want to be aggressive and kind of find that balance because they are sitting on 19 fouls. You don't want to send them to the line, but you want to try to get extra possessions and a great job that time moving the feet was Colby Quay as Underwood gets whistled for the offensive foul. Maddox Underwood gets the offensive foul. That's his first of the night. Fortunately, he's not in foul trouble, but a really nice play by the defender from Kenton as he steps in the lane and just takes the ball away. And the big shock is half of the gym disagreed with that call. Right, right. I, I, it's, it's amazing. The other half thought it was a great call, did, but the other did, half yeah. did not agree with it. <laughs> a spirited crowd here tonight in Hardin County. 2.31 to go. This is Lawrence. Gets it over to Yoder. He's guarded by Stevens. And the ball goes off of Yoder. And Rams will steal it. Here comes Sanders. And he's just wisely going to bring it back out top. So a nice move by Alex Sanders as he could have att attacked the rim. But he brings it back out. And the Rams will try to kill some clock. Well, and USV knows where the foul situation is. They know that at some point, Ken's going to have no choice. They're going to have to foul like we see just there. And, he, and they're going to go to the free throw line. Now the big thing is USV has to start con converting these free throw shots. You know, uh, Alex Sanders is making another trip to the free throw line. He is 0 for 3 from the line here in the fourth quarter. Um, so he's going to have to start making some of these shots if they want to try to extend this lead. Now he misses another shot. He is 0 for 4 in the fourth quarter here. The lead remains 49-42. You know, you know, the problem with these free throws, with every miss one, it gets a little bit harder to make that next one. And just on command, he makes the next one. <laughs> And that, that, that's just a great mental <laughs> makeup. Right. And that, Absolutely. you know, Alex Sanders, you know, he's been playing a lot of basketball. He's been around for a while. Um, and they did, yeah, they're good. Uh, they, they were saying that they didn't give him the point, but the point goes up on the board, makes it 50-42. Alex Sanders has 13 tonight. Yeah, but as I was saying, Alex Sanders played a lot of basketball for USB. Yes. Um, he, he has a lot of experience, and that's just great having a great mental makeup that time. You know, 0 for 4 and a quarter, and you're lining up to shoot another one. A lot of times you, you, the pressure gets on you, you. You try to force a little bit too much, but just took a deep breath and able to make it as yeah. – Kenton right now is just making their own mistakes. We saw him give one back on that last possession. Great job getting the offensive rebound. But then Colby Quay kicks it off his foot out of bounds. It's going to come back to USV. Yeah, Yoder misses the three-pointer. Colby Quay takes it off of his foot. And the Rams get the ball back with 1.57 to go. This is Drew Stevens. He's trying to break the pressure. And they find Mason Thompson all alone. And a great job by Mason Thompson as he just kicks it back out. And they realize, you're exactly right, Nate, they realize the foul situation. And Coach White's telling Mason Thompson, that's not a bad job, young man, not a bad job. Yeah, you get a lot of people will watch and go, oh, you should have scored, take the points, but you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. You miss it. There's no reason to. You have the lead. Pull it out, make them foul you, take well, the easy shot. Yeah, and it wasn't a clear-cut shot. He had a defender in his face, and he did the right thing, in my opinion. He kicks it back out, and they're going to the line to shoot two. Absolutely. The only thing that you might like to have seen on that one is to see Helton make the first one is they just have to be a little bit more intentional with their passes. Sure. That time is a little bit lazy, trying to get out there, almost led to a turnover. We had a scramble, but either way, it ended up working out for USV. So help misses the first one. He tries to get back on the second one. Shot goes up, and it goes in. He gives the Rams the 51-42 lead. Helton's got three on the night. Here come the Wildcats, 143 to go. So they got to have a little bit of sense of urgency now on the offensive side there. They're, they're going to have to try to get some good shots up. This is Piper. He's been relatively quiet here in the second half. Had a nice first half. They'll go to the middle of the floor. Shot goes up, and it goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the ramp. They're saying it went off of, went off of upper side of Alley. Number 10, Colby Quay misses the shot. They're saying it went off of the upper side of Alley defender. Ethan Yoder is going to be the trigger man on this play as he kicks it back out to Lawrence. And they get a steal, but it goes back into the hands of the Ken Wildcats. This is Yoder with the ball. He's going to go a little scoop shot, misses it. Not the shot Coach Miller wanted. Maddox Underwood will bring it down. You know, I think Kenton keeps trying to anticipate some contact. USV's doing a nice job of not getting into the bodies and um, you know, letting Kenton try to force some things. That time Yoder on the left side tried to finish with the right hand underneath the defender, couldn't get it to go. And then on the way back down, another foul on, for Kenton. So another two free throws coming as Drew Stevens steps to the line. Colby Quay fouled. That's his fourth. Drew Stevens will go to the line. Drew's got 11 on the night as he tries to add to his total and he tries to add to the team total. 
First one's on the way and goes off. That is, they have missed five of the last six. And Coach Miller and the Wildcats will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 109 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our premier sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose Family Center is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. In our lid lifter tonight, the JVs from Kenton High School defeated the upper side of Valley Rams 61-20. You and I got to watch a little bit of that game. So, Yeah, Kenton JV looked real good. They did. Uh, USV, again, you know, they're still, they're kind of, I don't want to say rebuilding a program, sure. but they're trying to get the numbers back in there, trying to get the program going. Coach White's doing a good job, and you see the varsity's having success right now as they're trying to protect this nine-point lead. 109 to go. Drew Stevens goes to the line. Second shot on the way. And he knocks that one in, gets the friendly roll, and the Rams have the 10-point advantage at 52-42 with 105 to go in the game. This is Tyson Lawrence as he dribble drives back out to Yoder. Yoder goes to the right side, back out to Manns. Manns tries to go back inside into Yoder. Gets a lot of contact. Mason Thompson trying to corral the ball for the Rams. And they are going to call a foul on Tyson Lawrence for the Wildcats. That'll send Mason Thompson to the line. Under a minute left to go now. Time might be running out for the Wildcats. As they had done a nice job all night. And then going into this third quarter, the offense has just gone cold. Mason Thompson knocks in the free throw. He's got three on the night. Played some valuable minutes in place of Blaine Castle. Let's the second one fly. And it goes off the front iron. 53-42, Rams lead. This is Mann from the left side. And he knocks it in. And that, that's a long scoring drought for the Wildcats, Nate. They needed that one. They're yeah. still down 53-44. They got to get extra possessions, and they got to get them quickly. 30 seconds to go. And they're going to get a foul on number 11, Seth Manns. You know, if they're going to foul, I'm surprised that it took them so long. As yeah. soon as that kind of gets into the front court, you got to go. I said, okay, turn, we're not going to get the turnover. We got to save as much time as possible, especially when, you know, at the end of the day, sure. USV is struggling from the free throw line. They Even in this fourth quarter, and you, you, you said it earlier, it's it, right now it's it's bothering Alex Sanders because he airballs that one. So that young man needs to get it focused back together, and he will. He's too good of an athlete. And there you go. Oh, I thought he was going to knock that one in. He misses that one. Makes it 53-44. 20 seconds to go here. Steal by Helton. He'll go down the right side. He'll take it up and misses the shot, rebound by Underwood, and Drew Stevens follows up with a nice bucket, and he makes it 55-44. This is Tyson Lawrence, eight seconds to go. Takes the jumper, he knocks it in. He'll make it 55-46. And that will do it. The final from Kenton High School. The upper side of Valley Rams defeat the Kenton Wildcats, 55-46. So, the Rams go to 3-0. The Wildcats fall to 1-2. A big-time county rivalry. We saw some good plays, some sloppy play. Your overall impressions, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I think both of these teams have plenty of talent. And, they, and even Kenton, um, you know, they struggled some last year. You know, but I don't think it's going to be as bad this year. You're going to be able to go back. They're going to sure. be able to watch the film. They're not obviously happy with the results. But when you look, a lot of them, especially in that fourth quarter, they were self-inflicted wounds. They were you yes. know, uh, easy turnovers, bouncing basketballs off of their feet, getting steals. Even when they got stops, they weren't able to take advantage because they were turning the ball over on the offensive side of things. Those are all coachable things. You know, sometimes when you look at teams and, and you're looking like, well, you know, we can only coach so much, you know, there's a talent level discrepancy. And that's not the case. A lot of the issues you saw with Kenton tonight are things that they're going to be able to fix inside the gym. And when you talk about USV, I think they learn a lot about themselves tonight too. We mentioned coming into the game, you know, not a lot of depth, didn't think they'd go to the bench very much. They had no choice. Blaine Castle immediately was in some foul trouble. The entire yes. team was in some yeah. foul trouble for the most part outside of one or two guys, and they were still able to weather that storm. They were still able to play their style. They were able to still get to the basket. They slowed things down when they needed to. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we talked about it in the first half, but 
Maddox Underwood. He he, he held he, he held him all in check, did he not? Yeah. He, he was the catalyst for that Ram team. You know, whether he needed a big rebound, whether he needed, you know, a run out, whether he needed a three-pointer, whether it was a pull-up jumper, whatever it was, Maddox Underwood was there to get it done. And, you know, and he's the reason that they won the game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So that'll do it from Kenton High School. The Upper Side of Valley Rams defeat the Kenton Wildcats. For Nate Garlock, I'm Danny Holbrook, and our entire WSN crew saying we'll see you next week. <laughs>